Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 19 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This time for Pioneer Graphics is in the old Coca-Cola building here in Fitzgerald, Georgia. There's a screenshot from the 2013 when uh, Google last came by for their maps. So when I organize a digital marketing strategy, the first step is going to be research and I start with the status quo snapshot. I want to understand where are we starting from. Along those lines, this is one of the first things that I do is I'm going to go Google it. So you can see that they show up at the top, that their Facebook page actually outranks them, but still, at least they're web, they do have a website and it is showing up up front, right? They have six Google reviews. That's good. Five of five on Facebook, three times. They definitely have some things going. I mean, they've been around since 1990. So some of the questions that I move through, as well as some of the reports that I do are listed here. But the point of all the research is to put together a SWOT chart, and that's strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And this is any time that I organize a digital marketing strategy, I'm documenting it and I always see them as a living document. So the idea is that we're going to come back to it over time and update it. The goal of this strategy would be to build the digital brand of Pioneer Graphics. And the point of view would just be the same folks. I mean, people in Ben Hill County, Irwin County, and surrounding counties. The pressing problem is just, uh, there's a lack of friction-free access to their services. Now, I would treat them as a media company. And what do I mean by that? I mean that rather than treating them as an advertiser, I would treat them as they create their own media. But at the end of the day, they have all this acumen that they build up. They would start producing their own media, which they would archive at their website, which would also be where they would have a store that allows people to buy any of the different services and products that they offer would be available there. Your account would be available online all the time and so on and so forth. So the access would be through the website plus the normal hours of operation. The value to customers is they're able to use their phone to engage with Pioneer Graphics. The idea is just when marketing today, you have to be able to get and keep attention. You get attention everywhere but your website. You keep attention on your website coupled with email. So the Pioneer Graphics is 25 years in Fitzgerald, Georgia. They have any number of offerings, they have the team that they've had for any number of years, etc. So I would just start with all of that. Now, the audience point of view, people and organizations, it, these are two segments. And then from there, you're going to want to be specific amongst those segments. As far as the show format, I'd spotlight the people, the services, the processes, the best practices, and the customers of Pioneer Graphics. It's just they have all of this institutional knowledge. They have all of these experiences from 25 years. They have this story that they've lived. And so I would start to document that. I just, that's where I'd initially start and then answer questions that customers regularly ask and start creating for specific segments. So you, the way that you're going to speak to somebody that makes 100000 a year versus somebody that makes 40000 a year is going to be different. You want to be specific to that person and what they care about. When you're creating media, and when I talk about media, I'm talking about creating video, and then you extract the audio and you are able to bring out a written version with images and you know, so forth. So that it's about the people that consume the media, it's not about the media company itself. So I would start with a show schedule of at least weekly. It's not a case of trying to do just a little bit, it's you wanna put out as much media as possible because you just don't know exactly. You wanna let the market decide as far as what they like and what they care about, what they share and what they, you know, so forth. So as far as for media creation, I always plan it on my wall when I'm ready to kind of formalize it and because I have to kind of put a, a cap on how much time, because I'll spend forever planning, right? So I plan it and I put it into my slide deck with Google Slides and then I record the video using Soapbox by Wistia like I'm doing now. I edit the video with iMovie. I have the pro version of Soapbox by Wistia which allows me to download an MP4 file and do some editing with that. And then from there I can publish it and distribute the video. 
And the deliverable is you always have the individual episode, but then beyond that, you want to create contextual media for the different media platforms that you're going to upload it to. So let's say that you're going to upload it to LinkedIn. It needs to be, if you're going to do a video to upload organically to LinkedIn, it's got to be under 10 minutes at this point. So if you want to put a video on Instagram, it needs to be vertical and it needs to be one minute. All the different places that you would put the media, you're going to want to do it natively. So those are additional deliverables for each of the individual episodes. Now, as far as distribution for video, I put it into Wistia when I'm going to embed it on the website. Otherwise, I upload natively everywhere. So Facebook brand page, YouTube page or ch YouTube channel, as well as LinkedIn and so forth. Audio, I just use anchor.fm. It's free and they push it to 10 different podcasting platforms for me automatically. As far as the written in images, that's just your website forward slash blog. So jasonobsllc.com forward slash blog is where you can find all of my media. And the strategy, the website is the foundation, the store. And I would be using the Genesis child theme Essence Pro. And the reason I do that is I like to keep it extremely simple. So when I'm talking about a website, I begin with the home page and that's the first version. Let's get everything that's required to make it work. So all the home page widget areas because I'm using Essence Pro, right? The navigation menus, which because of Essence Pro, I can put one up top and one at the bottom. And typically I put the same one up top and same one at the bottom to begin with. But the idea is make sure that the home page is populated with the proper message that speaks directly to your customer. And beyond that, make sure that all the different pages that are linked to from it are filled out. Beyond that, make sure that you begin your digital catalog. You don't have to have everything to begin with. And so in this instance, I did three example products. And then as far as WooCommerce plugins, there's going to be a handful, if not a few of the premium ones that you're going to want. But that really depends on the specific situation. And what other tools that they use. So with Pioneer Graphics, it's specific to them, but it's unresearched. So I don't know what other, you know, what are their point of sale system is and so on and so forth. Like I just, I don't know. So I don't know exactly which WooCommerce plugins to recommend. However, there's probably going to be some premium ones and some free ones typically. It's typically a mix. So your media archive would also be, that's like the last piece. And you want to archive it on your website, on land that you own. So here is, I threw together a working demo. If you go down on example, go to jasonopsllc.com forward slash example dash 19. That's the one and nine together. And when you go to that, scroll down, you'll see a big green button to come check out the working demo. And this is the home page. And when you scroll down, this is below that. You can see that they can log in and register if they want. Once they do, their entire account is displayed there for their convenience. As far as below that, you have the about, the shop, and the customer testimonials. I would have, I put three examples in the shop, but I would have everything available there. Let them order it whenever they want, however they want, and make it more about the customer and how they want to consume the content because now it's available to them through their phone or their website and so forth. And they don't have to come up there all the time and they don't or pick up the phone and call them. So there's the three example. If you click the add to cart, it works. I didn't really populate anything other than the price and the name and you know the an example image. So as far as the customer conversation, I'd be adding live chat and email. If you see here in the bottom right hand corner, that's for the drift live chat, which also they provide the email. So I'd be adding basically by adding drift, you're adding live chat and email. And I would pipe everything in. And so all the WooCommerce actions and just any interactions that that customer had with Pioneer Graphics, I would pump it all into the drift.com um each customer has their own timeline and so you pipe all that outside stuff in in addition to the live chat and email that's already natively there and it allows you to get to know people and then start to make contextual messages and offers and so forth uh, over time as you get to know people so the fifth step is the campaigns 
And there's typically going to be multiple of each of the different categories. I have three categories that I focus on, and I'll show you an example of one of each. And the first one is get attention. So everywhere but the website, basically. So I would start with the origin story of Pioneer Graphics and the old Coca-Cola building here in Fitzgerald, Georgia. How did they buy the place? What led them to decide to open up a graphics company in Fitzgerald? And they've been around for 25 years. So obviously, they're doing something right, right? As far as keeping attention, I would start by segmenting the email list. And they may very well already be doing this. However, I very much formalize it. And within Drift, it would allow us to start to get to know people. I'd start with an email cadence of once a week. So the foundation, definitely for them, I would start with local citations. Make sure that with brightlocal.com, their local citation builder service, it like five bucks per site and some are two bucks a site, just depends. But what they do is they make sure that every site on the internet that mentions Pioneer Graphics will have the proper name, address, and phone number, as well as the description. And a, you know, some offer a short description and a long description. Others have a gallery of images and, along with a featured image and others just show the featured image and some will have video and so, you're able to put all that information into brightlocal.com and then they go and make sure that all the different places are correct. So that was example 19, that's Pioneer Graphics. If you wanted to do it yourself, around 659 to start and then another two and then 229 per month from there. The 39 a month for Liquid Web for the managed WooCommerce hosting to get started, it's gonna go up as the they start because they would have a lot of products and services to make available through WooCommerce. And because of that, as their volume started to pick up, they would be moved off the beginner plan, the $39 beginner plan, and moved on to one of the other ones. But they also add a bunch of additional stuff with that as well. So it's definitely a good thing. 50 bucks a month, drift.com. That's for two live chat operators plus the email. Wistia for the video hosting and analytics for everything that goes on their website. And when you're treating yourself as a media company, you really want that Wistia.com to use. You could embed your Facebook or a YouTube video or whatever, but there's some issues that come with that. And even though they are free, and so I love the fact that I can control the player. So gatherup.com for the customer feedback loop. I would start with Wistia.com forward slash soapbox. It's a Google Chrome extension, which I'm using to film this. 300 bucks a year and well worth it because now I can record this and then I can also download a copy to pop into iMovie and make any edits I want and then put out the different formats that I need to start to distribute it. So 130 bucks for the studiopress.com for Essence Pro theme. That's the Genesis child theme that I use. If you have questions, Jason at jsonsllc.com, my cell phone, feel free to drop me a text or leave a message if you call and I don't know who you are, I'm not gonna answer. So leave a message and I always check and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. As far as episode 20, I have no clue at this point what I'm gonna do for it, but it will come out on Monday, December 31st of 2018. So hopefully you had a great Christmas and you're right in the midst of a very happy new year.